Hello everyone, this is Melanie from Melanie B's Creative Studio and Supplies, and today I have something extremely unique for us. And I'm so super excited about it because I've never tested or actually seen a round paint by number quite like this one until I spoke to Marina at Wizardi and she said, hey, take a look at what we have new. I want to send you one because we are now partnering with a Ukrainian company called, and I'm going to try this, you guys. I really hope I don't mess it up. I looked for a pronunciation for this, but I want to say it's IDECA. They have gorgeous designs for paint by number, diamond painting, cross stitching. Now, you guys know I brought you with Zardi before. They have spectacular designs as well. I've loved their kits. Everything I'm going to discuss today will be in the description below. So let's jump in and see what they have. I've already taken off the cellophane because, you know, lights and shiny things don't go well together. Now, first things first, we have our image. And what I like about this image, you will appreciate the fact that they're showing us what this is going to look like when it's completed. We're not getting some kind of image here that is blended, that is unrealistic for the results that we're gonna achieve with this kit once we paint it. We know this is a paint by number, not a photograph. Show me what I'm getting and I'm more likely to purchase your kits in the future. Y'all know what I'm saying. It also tells us in advance, what level is this? And level is just going to mean some of these are probably gonna be transparent or translucent colors. Those of us who've been doing this a long time will know yellows, oranges, reds. Some of these are booger colors. You know what I'm saying? I call these demon colors. <laughs> they are by nature not as pigmented, so they can be very transparent. People who have some background and paint by numbers will know how to approach those kind of colors. It's my job to show you what to do so that you don't get frustrated when you get to those colors. But that is why I'm gonna imagine they're calling this a level three because it doesn't look like there are a lot of tiny openings. Before we look at the contents, let's take a look at the canvas. So the canvas has thin lines, which are black, but they're not bold black. We know we don't want the bold black. Same with the numbers. So we do have numbers that are very visible, but not bold black. I'm gonna swatch the paints. I already have my canvas swatch guide printed. You guys can get this at my website. I'll link that below. I'm using the inkjet printable canvas to print my swatch guide on because it gives me the most realistic idea of how these paints will react on a canvas surface. So that's what I have here and we will test that in a minute as well. But let's see what the contents are of this kit. When I lift this up, I guess all that stuff's gonna be underneath. So they have stapled it to the back. You can see that they've stretched this beautifully, which I should have mentioned. They have tightly stretched this canvas, which I love. So you can tell there is no real flex in the middle. A lot of people will ask, can you add clear gesso to a stretched canvas? Absolutely. So no issues there. In fact, it's nice when it's on a stretched canvas because it has the ability to breathe and to dry if you have it propped up on something or whatever, but you have this, you know, airflow in the back. If you're going to blow dry it, I blow dry it from the front and then I blow dry it from the back to make sure that it, it actually dries faster that way. So good to know, right? I'm going to pull the paints off. You can see they're vacuum sealed, which does help a lot in preserving the paints. We're going to have three brushes that are the most common for us. A little flat brush, a round brush, and a smaller round for the detail areas. And we're gonna look at the paints in a minute, but do you guys see the palette? It's been a while since you've heard me say it. For those of you who've been watching me, say it with me. Yummy, delicious. Ah. Okay, so sunset goodness, hello. Ooh, yummy delicious does not mean it's edible, but it sure does look delicious to me. Right. Sorry. 
I'm about to lose my mind up in here, up in here. Okay, I think it's too late for all that. All right, now let's look at this. Instructions. I wasn't gonna read it or anything. I just wanted to show you, included. Now for those of you who are new to paint my number, um, all you need is Melanie B's Creative Studio on YouTube. Okay, and then we have our reference guide. Hey, I wanna see these paints. Y'all know I'm all about those paints. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not bursting into song. I'm not bursting into that Megan Trainer song. Y'all might be. <laughs> I tore my picture. I will save the front of this to go with my uh, canvas. Uh, and while I'm working on it, I'll have it as a reference. I always save a picture in my phone anytime I purchase a new Pay my number kit. All right, so we're not gonna take a look at the brushes really because they are just kind of the standard brushes, but they are really soft. All right, let's bust open some paints. So what I like about these paints, besides the fact that they're yummy deliciousness visually, is that they're also not super bright. So the palette isn't my typical bright, in your face, <laughs> the kind of palette y'all have known me for. <laughs> a lot of you guys would love this. It's more of a neutral sunset palette. So loving it. I got a rinse cup with one of my rubber scrubber discs in the bottom that I sell at the shop. I have a stir stick in case I need to stir the paints. Usually you should stir every paint when you first get it and open it and start using it. And I have a paper towel just, just to wipe excess water off my brush before I dip into the next paint. I have cleaning stuff for my brushes over there somewhere for afterward. So let's get started. I'm using an ungessoed surface here to test the paints right out of the pot. And I will time lapse this once I'm done. And that is weird. <laughs> These paint pots are kind of backward. Like the pop top is on this side, which is a little opposite of what I'm used to. You know, normally it's on this side when you pop. I'm gonna be careful. Ooh, those are creamy. Whoa, so beautiful. Let me tuck it back in. Tuck that one back in. You look at that, y'all. <gasps> okay, I just made a big old mess. That was so creamy, I wasn't expecting it. There's a lot in the top. There's a lot of paint in that too. Ooh, that's so beautiful. So I, I will clean this up. I might close them now and then come back later and clean all that up. But because that will dry and actually glue my paint pot shut if I'm not careful. When you stir your paints, you want to make sure that you stir from the bottom and stir really well. And then take what's in the lid and add it to the paint pot. Take some tweezers and pull off any dried paint before you close your paint pot. Right, let's go. Time lapse. All right, so let's take a look at what we ended up with here. And we did have a few, as I expected, the usual suspects were translucent or transparent. I actually have four categories that I like to term the opacity of paints. Transparent are the ones that are impossible to get coverage. Doesn't matter what you do, how many layers you put on it. I swear you could do 25 layers and you, you might still see the little paint pot or the number underneath. This one is transparent. This one's transparent. Okay, so the next level up would be what I like to call semi-transparent. That means that after 10 coats, you might get full coverage. So this one right here is somewhere between semi-transparent and transparent. So I'm actually gonna give it a little boost and say semi-transparent. So the third classification of opacity would be semi-opaque. That means that it is close to being opaque, but I can still see a line on the first layer. It might take a second or a third swipe over the number 
to get full coverage. So that, and that is what a lot of us will call translucent, but translucent to me is kind of a varying term. So that is a semi-opaque one. That's a semi-opaque one. That one's a semi-opaque one. And that is a semi-opaque one. Now I'm gonna hold this up and give it a good look. These two are semi-opaque, but very close to being opaque. So I almost hate to put semi-opaque, but the rest of these are beautifully opaque, beautiful. But I'm gonna tell you, the consistency of these paints was phenomenal. You saw that, like it's just phenomenal. In addition, I love the finish. It's more like a satin finish. It's not a matte. It's not really a glossy, but it's more of a satin. And I just love the way it looked. The other thing about this kit that I thought was so unique, and in a minute we're gonna talk about how to fix these paints to troubleshoot so that you don't ever have to say, I'm not buying a paint by number kit because that palette is a tricky palette. So we're gonna troubleshoot this in just a second. But I wanna tell you why I would still purchase this kit even with this palette. And it's because of this. I mean, like, this is such a unique piece, and I really didn't talk about it enough in the beginning. This is a 16 by 16. I'm just loving the shape, and I always intentionally pick the painting with the trickiest palette to bring you guys, because if I show you a painting that has a tricky palette and it has 23 phenomenal colors, then you know any of their other kits are gonna have a phenomenal palette, right? Well, in my mode of thinking, these here are so beautiful and their finish is so beautiful that I wouldn't hesitate to purchase their other kits. But that's just me. I like unique pieces. I like the fact that they had unique designs. And so, you know, that's a personal thing. So right now, I'm gonna show you a couple of things you can do to make these transparent colors not transparent. That way you'll never look at a kit like this and say, I'm not gonna buy that because I'm scared. <laughs> All right, you may not say I'm scared, but <laughs> you might actually say it like a normal person, <laughs> not like a hillbilly redneck from the South um, because I love to use my Southern fur drama up <laughs> just when I do. So I'm gonna go grab a few things and then I'm gonna show you on the swatch guide how we're gonna make these transparent or translucent colors work. In the past, I've talked to you about the Three Shades of Grey and my Three Shades of Grey original collection. On Black Friday, I introduced a new perfect paint collection called the Three Shades of Grey Road Trip. This is the prototype. It will be a little different as far as labeling, but this is the container it's coming in. I'm not here to talk about this kit, but I do wanna tell you that this is what I'm gonna be using to show you how to fix the paints in any kit that you get that you're struggling with the transparent and translucent paints. We'll talk about this another day. I'm gonna move it out of the way right now. I only have a few of the items that will be coming in it in front of me, but I'm gonna just set it aside and let's focus on what we have in front of us. I'll be using the whipped cream from my set, Miss Light Gray, which is almost white. I have worked on this gray to make it as perfect as possible. And then I'm using Mr. Dark Gray. These two do not require Mrs. Medium Gray. And all this makes sense if you've watched any of my Three Shades of Grey videos before. Six years ago, when I started doing paint by number, I originally taught that you put down white, like a white Sharpie, before you put down your color and it would give you better coverage. And that is true in some cases. That is why my new set does include a white. White does work better under certain colors. And that's when my hubby, who is a nationally certified paint consultant and the paint department manager of a Lowe's Home Improvement Store, told me that when you want to get the best coverage on your walls, you use a shade of gray to prime instead of a white. And I was like, game changer, once I tested it. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you first how many layers it actually takes 
with this transparent paint to get full coverage. And on the right side of the swatch, I'm gonna use the white and a couple of shades of this gray to test with this paint to see how many it takes to get the best coverage. If we just prime with one of my grays underneath instead. Down and let's go. While I'm waiting for that swatch to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare the gray and the white swatches for the right side. And let me go ahead and explain a little bit about how to use the perfect paints. You want to make sure that you're always stirring from the bottom before you get started with the perfect paints because I used so much pigment. In order to make my paints more opaque than other brands, I used a lot more pigment. So because of that, if the paints are sitting around for any length of time, and I mean even an afternoon, you wanna make sure that the pigment hasn't settled or separated from the binder because these are handmade and you just want to give them a quick stir before you start using them. Unlike James Bond drinks, these like to be stirred, not shaken. I decided to go ahead and test a couple of colors from this kit. So I'm going to put down on the right side of the swatch, the white, the light gray, and the dark gray. And then in a minute, you're gonna notice, I'm gonna grab Mrs. Medium Gray, and I'm going to test her with one of the colors as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put one layer of each of those primers down so that they'll be dry when I'm ready to swatch over each one of them. Here we are with layer number seven on that one swatch. Let's go ahead and test that color over the grays and the white we've put down. You'll notice that it does not do well over the white and it's lightening up the original color way too much. I decided to try two different types of light gray. I added a mattifying medium to this kit. And so I added a little bit of that medium to one of my light grays and I left the original as it was. That way, this creamy paint didn't slip around on the top. And that's what you see with number seven in that swatch above. I then decided to take number 19, which is that really dark brown that was a little streaky in the beginning, and add it over dark gray to see how it looked and whether it was streaky. I swatched it over white, dark gray, and I swatched it over a mattified dark gray. Then I decided to test number five because it's one of those really tricky oranges. And so that's what I'm doing here. I put it over white, light gray, original, and a mattified light gray. Now we need to take a really close look at how this works with these transparent and semi-transparent paints. You can visually see that all the white does work really well to cover the number. It doesn't always look the best under some colors. And even here, you can see, I think you can see that the white shows through this color. Now, after I put this color over the light gray, I, I did determine that it could have gone over medium gray because it is a medium tone, but it looked beautiful over light gray. So you can see the coverage is perfect. Just two layers. So one layer of gray, one layer of that color. And how many layers did we do here of that one color? That is the purpose of the gray prime or the white prime, depending on which one is gonna work best for your scenario. So let's look at the 19. Now this 19 paint, I should have mentioned, was not an extremely streaky paint to begin with, but I did have to go over it, you know, back and forth quite a bit when I swatched it to eliminate some streaks. So I thought it was a good one to test. It actually did okay with the white under it. Normally darker streaky paints do not do well with white, but I was very happy with that result. But it did beautifully with both the matte and the original dark gray. All right, so number five, which we did not test over here for how many layers it would take. I assume it would take at least as many as number seven, if not more. And actually I'm sitting here looking at number seven. I can still see that paint pot. So it would have taken probably another layer. Imagine how thick that would be. But five, yeah, who knows? Number five on the white is just messy looking. Like, I don't know why. And I'm not disregarding white as a primer ever. It's hard for me to even say which colors 
sometimes cooler colors it looks really perfect under but then the grays do too so i'm putting the white in this road trip kit just to give you that alternative but i tend to go with light gray instead of white every time now for my light valued paint colors but that's i wanted to give you the option let's look at number five over the matte light gray beautiful beautiful coverage in one extra layer and then with the original now on the original one i don't know if i just didn't get as many strokes on there or whatever but it looks really great over that matte beautiful coverage on the first layer of our color and only two layers of paint whereas it would have taken seven or more layers you can always replace the color. That's why I came out with the colored collections of perfect paint. So you could get one coat opacity, you know, just replace that color with one of my colors and, you know, be done with it. But for those who don't want to spend the money on the paint collections that are already colored, you know, you can just get the grays, use it with the kits that you purchase, and you can see how versatile it is. So that's enough about how to fix troublesome paints. So let me summarize my thoughts on this kit. I took some time to clear gesso this canvas with Liquitex Clear Gesso. And these colors here really covered beautifully. I realized that I did not use the tricky paints on it yet, but I've shown you what to do if you run into the issues with the tricky paints. And since I recorded the very first part of this video, I have launched the Three Shades of Grey Road Trip Collection. I'll put the link right here on a five minute demo on how to use it and a little introduction to that kit. And again, I want to reiterate that I did select a kit with the most demon palette, <laughs> the most demon palette <laughs> that there was to choose from probably, but overall, I just think this is such a beautiful piece and it's going to be so unique once it's hanging. I don't have to frame it. It's beautifully stretched, as I mentioned. So, was already, I love it. Ideka, or however you pronounce that. I hope I'm not completely destroying your name. You've created a very beautiful, unique paint by number kit. I will put a link in the description for everything I have discussed today, everything I have demonstrated with. I'll be sure to include the links for the videos that I have mentioned as well. I also have another website, it's melaniebee.info, which will provide you with quick links for my most recent videos, the shopping list for those. It also has all of my favorite diamond painting and paint by number companies on a separate tab. There's also a tab for how to connect with me on all of my social media sites. So you might wanna visit that as well. But while you're here, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like and comment on this video, please. And if you don't mind sharing it, I would love that. By liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing, you help other people who are interested in the paint by number hobby to find my videos. So I really appreciate you doing that. As always, I want to thank you for joining me and I will see you back soon.